Hey folks, today is Friday, October 18th, 2019. As usual, my name is Jake Baldino, and we got a week full of video game news to talk about. We got an exciting show planned for you, so let's just jump right into it. The first news you may have seen floating around is Dino Crisis. Kind of. Sort of. Not, not really. So here's the deal. Capcom put out a 2019 annual report where they uh, essentially detailed all of what has been going on for the year and what they plan to do next year and uh they have three initiatives number one is increased digital sales that's kind of lame number two is to just do more businessy type stuff i don't know what uh, in layman's terms they want to continue to bolster their lineup and make more games with the current ips they have which is obvious game company wants to make more games uh, but number three they want to revive dormant intellectual properties which is a really cool way uh, for saying they want to bring back their old games. This is, of course, hot off the heels of the success of like the Resident Evil 2 remake, stuff like that. Capcom's been having a pretty solid year. So uh, this isn't the first time, uh, but they are officially on paper pursuing bringing back some of their older titles uh, with either new versions or remastered versions, what have you. But of course, let the speculation go wild. A lot of people immediately thought it would be something like Dino Crisis. I've even seen some people suggest Parasite Eve, which is kind of wild. Dino Crisis would be great because I feel like uh, dinosaurs never really go out of style. Uh, there is a really good fan remake going on about Dino Crisis. We talked about it a couple months ago, but we would still very much like that to come back and kind of get the second chance that series definitely deserves. The obvious bet though is of course, a Resident Evil 3 remake, which uh, they have already expressed interest about. We know they are probably working on something like that, but I want to see what else they got. Capcom has a lot of titles and properties that they're sitting on, so I mean, like, the possibilities are pretty endless. I think it's just exciting to see that they are making more stuff that we might actually possibly want. That's a win in 2019, or... 2020 going forward. Uh, in other more deep cut nerdy news, over 2,500 MS-DOS games are now available to just like download and play free on the internet. On the internet archive itself, uh, you now have access to tons of classic games, uh, particularly some cool ones from the 90s. You can you can access and play like the very first Alone in the Dark game. There's Mr. Blobby, that weird platformer, Super Munchers. Uh, you get access to older stuff like Camelot and some old Dungeons and Dragons stuff. Uh, this is really exciting if you're looking for something to play. Maybe you don't have a kick-ass gaming PC. Now you have access to a treasure trove of weird bootleg games that we used to play as kids. They're not all bootlegs, no disrespect, but I, I think this is exciting. This is more of just like a PSA. Of course, everything we talk about is linked in the description below. Now in other news, a little bit of microtransaction talk, uh, something interesting. It seems like we now have like the biggest, highest amount spent on a game on record. Absolutely wild, if true, it is from the developer's mouth at a conference in Asia. The publisher Yodo One confirmed that in their mobile game Transformers Earth Wars, someone spent $150,000. Dollars. Now, of course, for a lot of free-to-play mobile games and stuff, like they're designed to get people like this, these whales, these people that will spend a big chunk of money that makes up for a lot of the people that are just playing for free and not buying anything. But that can also be very predatory, uh, particularly if somebody has like a, a gambling tendency or, or compulsive tendencies. Uh, and this $150,000 on a Transformers game is insane. First of all, it's like a Transformers game I didn't even know existed. Could you imagine spending that much money on a like throwaway game? I'd actually, this sounds horrible, but like I'd actually feel better if somebody spent $150,000 in like World of Warcraft or something a little more meaningful. Not condoning that, not not doing that. I'm just saying like to spend that much money on a game that ultimately is, is, is vaporware and is not gonna matter in a year. That's crazy. That just shows how much like when people are playing the games, they're not thinking. And that's terrible. So p PSA, please don't do this. Now, in other news, a little bit of a different segment. I've been doing this occasionally. Got a lot of feedback from you guys on how I like to make the Friday show bigger or longer or more interesting. Uh, just recently, I got my hands on three hours of Jedi Fallen Order. They invited me to come play it, check it out, share my thoughts on it. No strings attached. Uh, and uh, spoilers, I like it. I am, of course, full transparency an easy to please Star Wars fan, but this is a Respawn game, a development team that I really like, and it seems like EA didn't really screw it up, at least not yet, at least what I can see. I'm still skeptical, but the gameplay itself, the core game here, I really like. A couple of takeaways really, uh, a big emphasis on exploration. Uh, a lot of the game uh, from the map, 
uh, to the way the worlds work and how you access it reminds me of Metroid Prime. It's got a really good sense of like kind of like endlessly flowing level design. Every planet has a lot you can do uh, to the point where I was doing a main quest and I thought I got to the end of the path and got a new objective to go to a new planet. And then I found myself still kind of continuing to stumble upon new things and find new lightsaber parts and things to help level up my character uh, with new powers, like new force powers and new droid abilities unlocking new areas. Well, that was pretty sweet. This isn't my gameplay captured here. This is the gameplay like they sent us to use. The person playing it isn't very good, uh, but I like the combat. I actually wish the combat was a bit more challenging. Uh, it's not like Force Unleashed. Everybody's asking me, the game looks like Force Unleashed. No, it's not really at all. Think something more like Sekiro. It's very much uh, in terms of if you're fighting a low-level stormtrooper, if you can figure out their attack timings and their attack patterns pretty easily, you can just do a like pretty much one-shot block, parry, insta-kill, which is cool because it's a lightsaber, and that's how it should feel. Of course, higher enemies take a couple more whacks, but it's really about uh, breaking through their block meter to then be able to kill them easily because, you know, that's, that's how it should work. It does have slight inspiration from the Souls games in terms of uh, uh, meditating at a bonfire fire, so to speak, uh, using your droid to heal you like Estus flasks, and also like losing your XP if you get killed and then going back and trying to kill that enemy to get that XP back. But it's not like those games because it's way more accessible and, and, and not as like brutal. But there's a surprising amount of depth to the combat and the world exploration, which I really like. And not only that, just like as a Star Wars fan, super into what I got to see there. The uh, Inquisitors, the uh, the sisters in particular, were really nicely represented. As a fan of the Darth Vader comic, I was into it. Uh, I got to go to Dathomir, which was really cool. I uh, got to see some alien races. I was very surprised to see in a Star Wars game. In short, so far, it just feels like a straight-up good old-fashioned Star Wars game, which is generally all I want. I've been answering a lot of questions on Twitter and stuff, what I can, what I have seen. Still skeptical, but overall, leaning towards the positive side. But honestly, I could keep talking about Star Wars, whatever it is, all day. Uh, let's move on. Uh, the next segment, of course, a bunch of things you should check out that have been on the internet this week. Uh, the first thing, in case you missed it, linked in the description, is a trailer for Red Dead Redemption 2 on PC. This is 4K. It's bananas. It doesn't look like wildly, wildly different, but I, I personally noticed with my stupid eye, um, more atmospheric effects. And of course, it's just sharper overall. I'm excited for that. I really want to see what that's going to be like with a nasty PC. Also, a lot of you guys out there sent me this and put it on my radar. Thank you for that. Uh, this user, Erasmus Brosdow, sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, but he's essentially recreating the Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty intro in Unreal Engine, and he put out like eight seconds of it on Twitter, and look at this. That's all. I mean, like, I'm I'm a diehard Metal Gear. That's awesome. Eight seconds, and I'm already, like, really hyped. Uh, so I just want to say, like, keep going. Really want to see this. We will highlight it on the show again uh, when you wrap it up, because that shit's tight. I think it's one of the most iconic video game intros ever, so best of luck. Also linked in the description below, if you haven't seen it yet, I'm just highlighting it. They don't need my help at all, but love Digital Foundry. Love what they did breaking down and comparing uh, The Witcher on Switch to the PS4 version. Uh, it's pretty fascinating, so check it out. We also did a Before You Buy on The Witcher on Switch. Uh, I played that quite a bit, and it is really impressive on a handheld. It's just like a miracle. Yeah, it's not perfect. It's not, you know, 4K gaming by any means, but to have The Witcher 3 on the toilet is amazing. That's a weird... Chef's Kiss is a weird thing to do on the toilet. Also, it just dropped this morning. We have uh, the launch trailer for The Outer Worlds. We'll probably have a video on that next week, so keep your eyes peeled. Uh, but next up, in another weird segment, I said we had a lot of like crazy stuff planned this week. Microsoft sent us a, a, a Taco Bell Xbox. They just sent it to us. Like This isn't sponsored or anything, but we really like Taco Bell, uh, so we unboxed it, and uh, here it is. Is it on? Yeah. Hello. I'm gonna stand here. Get out of the way. I'm trying to... Oh. Ooh. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Ba, ba, da, ba, 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 ba. Sick. How's it feel? Very nice. Na, 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 na. Pop. Pop, huh? That's cool. Wow. wow. So much Taco Bell. Oh, it's Ooh. different from the last one. Oh, the last so one it doesn't was have white, right? Yeah, last one was white. Very nice. Gray. Very nice. Now let's let's do the thing. Can we all push it together at the same time? 
they just sent it to us. This isn't like sponsored or anything, but we really like Taco Bell, uh, so we opened it up. But in some other interesting news, it looks like NVIDIA is once again staffing up to uh, keep making older classic PC games kind of remastered with RTX. Uh, Quake 2 RTX is a thing, but there has been a job posting uh, highlighting essentially a new project uh, with a new team on a new project uh, that they, they said, and I quote, we all know and love. They said they've been cherry picking from like the greatest titles uh, f from different time periods to give RTX and the speculation goes wild. What could it be? Could it be like old Doom games? Could it be Half-Life? Probably not. I don't know. I'm curious to see what you guys think, what it could be. Also, what you would want because Quake 2 RTX looks pretty sweet. So what other game would you want to receive that treatment? <laughs> Let me know. Also, definitely want to highlight this for a sec. I don't know if you guys saw this, but uh, the Coalition uh, put out a tweet uh, and a lot of people have been uh, kind of riled up about Gears 5 multiplayer bans. It seems like they're playing hardball here. It's kind of wild, kind of unprecedented. The Coalition put out a tweet saying, Quitters have been receiving month to year long suspensions for prior behavior. This is how long you can be suspended for being a rampant quitter take heat. Over the next few hours, impacted users will be unsuspended, but one quit away from suspension. You have been warned. That is crazy. It seems like they've been playing like straight up real hardball for aggressive quitters, essentially trying to set an example to make an example, kind of like jailhouse rules, and then saying, all right, if you do it again, you're going to be screwed like that again. Now, I do want to point out that people on Reddit and on social media has, have been highlighting like 640 day matchmaking suspensions, stuff like that. Um, then we also got to see some people from Coalition uh, look up those accounts and say like for this for this guy, for example, said he, he quit 18 of 21 matches in one day. So like as much as people are like getting loud on social media, it seems like they're really going after like the, the real rampant abusers because there has to be a balance, of course. There are some people who play that just have bad connections. There are people that play that like have, have children. That, that child could be falling down the stairs. They have to quit that game. But if you're quitting like an insane amount of matches to the point where it's almost like spam, uh, then yeah. But again, being banned for like two years, that's insane when you spent $60 on a thing. I'm curious to see what you guys think. I'm sure everyone's gonna have different opinions about this, different hot takes. So I'd love to hear from you. But let's move on and do that console giveaway we do every single week. You know how this goes down by now. There's a link in the description below. You click it to sign up, you enter once, then you're entered for good. And then every single week we go in to randomly choose one person to win a free console of their choice. Now, this week's winner is gonna be this person right here. Congratulations, be sure to keep it on your inbox, your spam box, stuff like that, because we're gonna be reaching out to you to find out how we can send you your free stuff. But with that being said, now we gotta talk about all the stuff going on this week. First things first, um, my impressions of Jedi Fallen Order and also uh, other outlets out there have put out stuff. I'd love to know what you think of the impressions. If you have hope or if you're still skeptical about EA, let's talk. Also with Nvidia remastering a classic PC game that we all know and love, what do you think it could be? And since we're on that subject, what do you think Capcom could revive? What old Capcom franchise would you like to see make a triumphant return in 2020? Because the possibilities are, 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 pr are pretty limitless. I'm actually really excited. Also, uh, don't spend $150,000 in uh, microtransactions for a dumb mobile game. I'm not going to tell you how to spend your money, but I mean, maybe I will for this. <laughs> That's, don't do that. Let's talk about anything in the news this week down in the comments, any stories we missed. We would love to hear from you guys. If you got anything else for me at all, be sure to yell at me on Twitter and Instagram at Jake Baldino, of course. But that's it. If you guys enjoyed this video, uh, first of all, thank you for coming around and watching every Friday. It's our favorite thing to do here, but clicking the like button does actually really help us out. We appreciate it. And if you're new, consider subscribing because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Pizza's on me. I almost... Forgot the catchphrase. What the f